The Great War of Oshos has begun, and the races have decided that there can be no peace, only victory through battle. And of course, only one race can reign supreme. Use your tactics, asymmetric abilities, and finely tuned deck to be able to come out on top of everyone else. This is Jared from The Broken Seal, and today we're going to be looking at how to set up and play Ignite. We're only going to focus on the base game today, and we'll do expansions at a later date. One thing to note, I have the Kickstarter uh, Deluxe Edition, so there are some items that I have that you may not have, depending on which version of the game you have. But the components should look similar, so you should be able to still figure out which components I'm using. So first, let's look at setting up the board. If you're playing with five to eight players, your setup will look slightly different than our two to four player setup version that we're going to do here. But regardless, you're going to have the village tiles along the border and the bazaar in the middle. The zones in the middle will be randomized each time you set it up to allow for different terrain types with each playthrough. When you set up your board for a two to four player game, you're going to have one through 18 and A through L. The boards, the villages along the side will all be the ones that you connect to make sure that the village is the border for the game. Then we're going to take our randomized center tiles and play them out on the board. Do whatever method you feel works best for randomization. You could have one player pick one, then keep going around for each player to pick one. They're also double-sided to allow for different options when you're playing. Also in a two to four player game, you're going to have mountains that go along the center to block off players. Now that we have our board, let's choose our starting player and races. The player who most recently lit something on fire gets to go first, so let the Pyromancer of your group start. The starting player then selects the race that they would like to be, and then continuing counterclockwise, each player selects their race. Then the last player to pick their race gets to select their starting area. Let's look at setting up the cards next. The easiest to set up will be the starting decks. Each player receives a deck that has five march cards, four daggers, and three old wooden shields. Each player will shuffle these cards into their deck before gameplay and begin by drawing their first six cards. As for the battle decks, which are the 16 cards that players will purchase from during the game, there is a suggested list that you can use to find within the rulebook, or you can make your own with some suggestions found in the rulebook as well. And with that, we're done with setup. Okay, now that we have setup out of the way, let's look at how to play. On a player's turn, they will do four things. First, check for beginning of turn effects. Second, action phase. Third, cleanup phase. And finally, fourth, draw phase. So first, beginning of turn effects. Any cards to say at the beginning of your turn take place now. This could be damage from a hidden spell's location or removing a token from a unit. If you need to decide the order of, a spell, of the effects that happen during this phase, the active player gets to choose. Next is the action phase. This is where you'll spend the majority of your turn. In this phase, you'll play cards either for honor or for their ability. You also cannot do anything that would cause damage to another player for the first four rounds in a two to four player game or two rounds in a five to eight player game. So let's break things down. If you play a card for honor, you gain only the listed honor value of the card located in the top left. Each card you use for honor will give you the value listed, and you can purchase a card or cards equal to the total amount of honor that you generated during your turn, with the price of the card being located in the center, equal to the number of units that you have either in the village or the bazaar. Something to note, you can only buy cards if you're in the village or the bazaar, and you can only buy as many cards as you have equal to the units in the village and the bazaar. For example, if I have two units in the village, I can buy two cards. If I have one unit in a village and one unit in the bazaar, I can still buy two cards. If you have a unit in the bazaar, you can also sell a card, which will give you the cost of the card in honor. Selling the card places it in the trash, not back in the deck that it came from. If you play a card for its ability, you'll do what's listed on the card, and you'll do this for movement, attacking, and other effects. Something to note, a single card applies to a single unit. So if you play March 1 for movement, it won't apply to all three units you control, just one. Movement is orthogonal and never diagonal. For movement, you cannot move through a unit that contains a, a unit or a minion unless you're using a mount card. You can't move through space that contains an impassable terrain token, and you can't end your movement on top of a unit, minion, 
or impassable terrain token. You can, however, move through or end your movement on a small item or passable terrain token. You can use less of the movement than the card gives you, and you cannot play another card until your uh, movement ends. So you can't break out your movement for other effects. For attacking, the range is still counted orthogonally, just like movement, and a unit can be too close to attack sometimes, so make sure you double check the range on your card. You're allowed to attack as many times as you have cards to play, but you can only play one card at a time, which the defender always has a chance to respond to. If the attack is not blocked, dodged, or otherwise negated, it is successful and the specified damage is applied. Check the rulebook for line of sight, self-harm, and final blows as those can be specific situation-to-situation -situation cases. If you've lost all your units, you're not out of the game yet. Each time it would be your turn, you spawn a water minion in your starting location, which has a 1-2 movement and an attack 1 at range with a damage 1. The minions give no trophies, but if the player controlling the minion kills a unit, they can collect a trophy. Last thing to talk about is terrain. On the back of your race card, you'll find a summary of the terrain effects that you'll interact with during gameplay, but we're going to go over them now. Planes are the most common terrain type that you'll encounter. They have no special effects, you move through them like normal. Lava will instantly kill any unit, minion, or item that enters it, and cannot have passable or impassable terrain tokens placed on it. The village is located along the border of the game space, and it's one of the ways that you can buy things during the game. As I mentioned before, you can only buy a number of cards equal to the units that you control in a village, and a unit in the village space takes one additional damage if they're attacked there, so make sure you plan your village stops appropriately. Mountain tiles, which are used primarily in 2-4 player games, are used to mark impassable terrain. You can also choose to play some of these throughout the player area if you wish, but talk about that with your group. Water tiles are important for certain spells, but other than that have no effect. It will also conduct electricity, so if you're using lightning for example, it will travel through all connected spaces, damaging all units, even friendlies, and units adjacent to the water. Keeping in mind that adjacent in this game has to be orthogonal and not diagonal. Forest tiles allow a unit to be hidden from ranged attacks, but still open to melee attacks. In addition, fire attacks will set a whole forest ablaze and deal one damage to all units. Something to note, if a unit is inside the forest and they are attacked, they would only take damage from either the initial attack or the fire damage that spreads throughout and not both. There are two additional terrain types that are available in the Freeze expansion, which are Acid Pools and Snow. And that's pretty much everything you need to know how to get started with Ignite. You want to read your rulebook to confirm line of sight, as well as some other specifics that I mentioned throughout the video, but this will be enough for you to get started with your first few games. Last thing to note, the player who gets four trophies first wins, and if you want to play a quicker version, you can do the player who gets three trophies wins. So thank you all for watching that video. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment, or even subscribe if you'd like. Uh, if you want to, you can also check out our Ko-fi page down in the description. Uh, it's a good way to help us out and make sure that we keep doing content that you all enjoy. Until next time, bye.